Part A should be between 68 and 77 degrees Fahrenheit or 28 to 25 degrees Celsius before you begin. If it is over 77 degrees Fahrenheit or 25 degrees Celsius, then make sure that your gallon is in a cool place before using it. Pour the contents of part B, the hardener, into the container of part A, the enamel. Using a mixing stick, slowly but thoroughly mix the contents for 10 minutes until it becomes completely homogenous. Now careful, because the enamel in part A will stick to the bottom, and the insides of the bucket, and even your mixing stick. Like you see in the video, you want to focus on mixing from the bottom up. Also, occasionally wipe off that enamel off your mixing stick so that it falls back into the container and you can keep mixing. And hey, no using an electric drill for this part. You may be tempted, but it can cause air bubbles in the enamel, so that's a no-go. We're ready to start painting. You're gonna to wanna to pour your paint into your cup, and then we're gonna start on the inside of the tub. So starting from the back, pour your paint along the top edge. Just let that paint flow down to the bottom of the tub. Keep pouring until you've covered the entire surface area of the inside of the tub. When pouring your paint, turn your cup towards the inside tape part of the wall. And don't worry about getting paint on anything, you'll clean that up once it's all covered. Oh, and refill your cup as needed. While you're painting, it's inevitable that you're going to get paint on your gloves, but do your best to keep those things clean using rubbing alcohol and or water. Let's face it, you don't want drippy paint hands getting paint all over everything, you know? That's just more cleanup for you. Use your comb to remove any excess paint from the corners or the front top edge of your bath, or if you have any hair out of place.
After you finish working on your inner walls, there's going to be a lot of excess paint on the floor of your tub that you don't want to go to waste. So using your plastic spatula, get that stuff into your cup. Be careful though, while you're scooping things up with your spatula, you don't want to dislodge or mess up any of the protective tape that you put down. Once you've finished the inner wall, you can remove the tape from the top tile wall like you see in the video. Pour the remaining paint on the top of the front wall. And if you need more paint, just go get it inside of your tub. Now, do the same thing that you did to the inner walls. Keep using that paint that drips down onto the paper to cover up any spots that don't have paint. After you finish, wait for 20 minutes. This will allow the paint to flow to the bottom of the bath. Now that you got 20 minutes, maybe call your mom, she misses you. Use the comb from your kit to finish the bath. Before using your comb, you need to put a tape like we show here in the video. It has to be three millimeters, it has to be three millimeters in height from the teeth. This will be the thickness and paint at the bottom of your bath. By doing this, you can ensure that the bottom layer is even. At this level, you'll be able to predict after two to two and a half hours that the paint has stopped flowing through the drain and you can safely remove the top layer of tape. Start by moving the comb from side to side and front to back. You wanna make sure that you're moving the paint from areas that have excess to areas that need more. Once the bottom's been completely covered, you wanna focus on removing any excess paint. Then, once the excess has been removed, you can focus on moving the paint to the back of the tub. Do your best to keep the bottom layer even and level. This will avoid paint dripping towards the drain area. Warning, air bubbles may appear at the bottom of the bath after you level it. You're gonna wanna use your hair dryer or your heat gun to pop those bubbles. Be careful with your heat gun though. You don't wanna focus on one area for too long. Keep it moving consistently and slowly until all the bubbles are gone. Leaving the heat on one area for too long could cause the paint to run and you don't want that. Also, be very attentive of the cord to your heat gun and make sure that thing doesn't fall into your wet paint. We're really getting there! Next up, you're gonna take your spatula and puncture a hole in the tape and then remove it without touching any part of the surface area of the bath. Using your plastic spatula, move all of the paint off of the side of the bath. Then, very carefully, remove the first layer of protective paper using both hands. Use one hand to remove the paper, and then the other to make sure that it doesn't touch or scrape up against any part of the surface of the bath. Use half of a paper towel to carefully clean off the drain area until you can see some tape, and be careful not to touch any surface area of the bath. Repeat this process every 15 to 20 minutes. After about two to two and a half hours of mixing part A and part B, the paint should stop flowing onto the protective area of the drain. Once it's stopped, then you can carefully remove the first layer of your protective tape. Use your spatula to puncture a hole in the masking tape, but be very careful not to puncture the duct tape. Then, just carefully remove the masking tape without touching any of the surface area of the bath. 
You can see that the paint probably went through the first layer of the tape, but that's why we have a second layer of protective tape to make sure that no paint drips into the drain. See what happens when you prepare? If you see that there's a lot of excess paint, just take a paper towel and remove it, but don't remove that second layer until the next morning. Good night. After two hours of mixing part A and part B, you're finally ready to remove the last protective layer of paper on the floor. Use both hands and be very careful that none of it touches any surface area of the bath. 